Hello. Happy Wednesday. Um, just been for my flu job. Have it every year. Touching wood, it never affects me. I'm feeling in a very beige mood today. I really do not like this hair colour. It's going to have to change. I keep going past the mirror thinking, oh, who the heck's that? You know, I mean to say that my natural hair colour is brown. I just really am just not liking this colour. It just feels very drab. I could have made an effort and put some makeup on, I suppose, but I just uh, feel very tired today. Nothing wrong with me, don't worry. Just tired. Guess I need an earlier night. Right, well, what have I been up to? Well, I've actually finished off the from sweater. It wants, well, I haven't finished it because it wants washing and blocking. Because it's been dangling around that long, I'm sure that it needs a good, well, not a good scrub, but you know what I mean, it needs a wash through. Um, yes, I know it's on the mannequin back to front, but I didn't want to give um, the sweater boobs. <laughs> So I put it on back to front so it does look a little strange. Um, it was one of those things that I sort of started. I don't know whether you do that. You start off and I did half the back. And then I kind of just stopped and I just went off it. You know, can't put my finger on why I went off it. I just went off it. And um, anyway, I... One day last week, I decided that, I think it was last week or the week before, it's no good. I've got to get it finished. So it's been, you know, on the hook way, way too long. I do, don't like having too many works in progress. I usually limit myself to maybe just two. Because of this reason, because once I put something down, I put it down. And it takes me like forever to pick it up again. I really need to keep going from the start to the finish. I might work two projects at once, but I don't put anything down, if you know what I mean. Like this, I actually put it down. And I rolled it up and put it in a bag and put it down. And that was fatal because that's where it stayed for quite a number of weeks. So I really don't like doing that. Anyway, what did I make it with? I made it with, it's called Sirdar Calico. It doesn't have a colour number, it's just one of those lovely ones that just says shade 0719. I'm not even sure if it's still available because I bought this uh, some time back. Um, it's 50% cotton I think. Oh no, 60% cotton and 40% acrylic and it's a 50 gram ball. It's by Serda. I can't remember where I got it from, sorry people. But um, I don't even know, like I say, if it's still available. Because when I see beautiful yarn like this, I have to buy it. Yeah. You know, it's like that. It's the name of a TV programme, The Price is Right, you know. <laughs> I love to work with what I call decent companies. Well, which is Serda and a few others. A decent, what I call decent co uh, companies. Um, they're not luxury, um, but they're the higher range of prices that I can use for passing on to other people, yeah? So, there it is. And what pattern did I use? Well, mine is the three quarters because Ethan's a hairdresser and he doesn't like long sleeves. He likes them to be three quarters. So it's a cross between of the two versions of this. You can see it. It's a King Cole pattern and it's 3472. Now, Ephraim had the pattern over in America, but I actually had already bought the pattern here. Nothing before Ephraim actually asked me to do it. So that's what I'm up to. Finished. What am I doing now? Um, vintage pattern, I'm afraid. No idea where or what it's from it's quite battered but that's what I'm doing is the cardigan but I'm not doing the 
imitation pockets on it. That's what I'm doing now. And I'm using another of my favourite yarns, which is um, James Seabrett Cotton On. This again is, uh, well, this is 50% cotton, 50 acrylic. It washes like a dream. It's wonderful to work with. You can get your hands on it. It's really lovely. Once again, it does not have a name. It's uh, shade number, oh, 029, no. <laughs> Here we go again, no glasses. C09. It's, I think it's called lilac or lavender, but it's a beautiful shade. And this is what it's making up. Like it's for an order, but it's very, very pretty. And my lady is just a tiny lady, so it's uh, growing quite quickly. <laughs> now then, speaking of Ephraim, he was very, very naughty. He told me that um, I should expect something through the post. So I'll show you part of it to start off with. I'm just going to tantalise you bit by bit. The first thing that was in the package, he'd ordered it from an English firm. So he'd ordered it from Ekemps, which is one of my favourite uh, places to order from. And first thing I saw was the pattern, which is Croft Asurda pattern, 7704. And it's um, a function. As you can see, it's got all little squares all around the edges. So I'm not sure how many squares you have to make. I haven't looked. Um, oh, for my size, I have to make 54 motifs. So I'd probably do them. You start with the back and the front and then you do the motifs, but I'd probably do a few motifs in between, you know, to break it up. So you wouldn't have to sit there and solidly make 54. If I was smaller, of course, I would only have to make 46 or 48. But because I'm a huge old, I have to make 54 for my size. The penitence of being a large lady. Right. And the second thing, oh, which I opened, which I've already made a, a butchers of the box, is... Um, their pony, I believe. Yes, their pony. Easy grip, easy crochet. Now, Ephraim knows that I like um, a soft grip, but I also like the longer bit of the shaft. Yeah, I can't crochet with anything. You know, a lot of the modern hooks, they have the comfy grips, but they go right up to the top of the hook. And they give you about that much hook. And I can't crochet with those at all. So, of course... I had to break. This is the reason why I broke the box up. It would have looked pretty if it had been in the box, wouldn't it? But I had to break the box open because I had to try it. Yeah. So um, I'm quite liking it. It's still. I don't know whether you've ever uh, you buy a new crochet hook and they always seem to have a bit of a, a coating on them. And you sort of like that with them for a while. You think I'm not going to like this hook. But then you wear it in. It's sort of like I think the yarn and the crochet must polish, you know, the, the shaft bit there that must polish it. And um, once it's been polished, then it's easy to work with. But I like it because I've got quite a bit of a, a handle to grip, which, you know, for my arthritis. But I've also got this longer length here for going. Don't ask me why, but I crochet further down the hook than a lot of other people do. For example, if it had had a thumb rest on it, I crochet down as far as the thumb rest. Um, just the way I learn to crochet is the way I do. There's no right, there's no wrong. I think we've been through all this before, whether you crochet overhand, underhand, pencil. You know, however you crochet, I'm not a critical of anybody because as long as it works for you, then it works, you know. So don't let people say, oh, you're holding the hook the wrong way. Or you're holding your yarn the wrong way, or you're doing this. Excuse me. Just ignore them. 
If you're happy with the way that you crochet and the way that you hold your hook and the way that, you know, the method that you do it, fine. There is no right or wrong way, so don't let anybody tell you different. I mean, I hold my hook completely differently than a lot of people do. Hold my arm completely differently than a lot of people do. It's the way I have evolved over the years. You evolve a style that suits you. Um, as I say, when you're learning, you might be slower and you might change the way you hold your hook as you go along. It's just practice, isn't it? And But please, don't let anybody tell you. You're doing it wrong because you're not you're doing it your way <laughs> you are an individual and whatever suits you you do it your way anyway these pony hooks come uh, from a two millimeter up to a six millimeter and I must confess I've not actually seen them uh, before I've seen many many different hooks with you know obviously with handles on them that's the box just dropped down but I've never seen any I've never seen the pony ones before and I like them because the hook end is very very similar to Susan Bait I don't like the bulbous thick hooks at the top again my personal preference it's not something I'm telling you to do loads of people like the other hooks you know that have got the fatter end on and that it's whatever suits your style as I said I can't use the hooks that go to a short bit at the top. You can. That's your style. You know, <laughs> it's like I keep saying, there is no right or wrong with crochet. Just do your own thing. Choose your own hook. Choose what works with you. I mean, I must admit, I would like to see, um, I mean, I don't have any yarn shops near me, but if I did, uh, a chance to work with different hooks before you buy them. You know, oh, excuse me, got something in my mouth again. So many hooks come in packages, or you buy them online, or A, B, or C, who's a wonderful crochet, says you must use this hook, or you must use that hook, or these are the only hooks to use. Once you've used this, you'll never change back, blah, blah, blah. I would like to have seen somewhere where you can try the hooks out before you actually buy them. I mean, before you consider buying them, if you belong to a knitting crocheting group or whatever, just see who's got a different hook to you and just ask them, could you possibly just try a little bit of crochet with them? I mean, most crocheters don't mind. You know, they would uh, let you borrow for five minutes. I mean, don't mean take it home with you, <laughs> but borrow for five minutes, you know, one of their hooks. I mean, let's face it, some of the hooks, like the furls, for example, are really, really expensive. And if they're not your thing, you know, and you buy the whole set, where, where do you go from there? You know, you're actually stuck with a very expensive set. Maybe you can sell them on, maybe you gift them or whatever. But I personally would love to um, try them out first. So this is very nice, Ephraim, because these actually, I do like them. I put it back in its little case, so I'll have to take it out again in a minute because I'm using it, but <laughs> that's how they are. They have got numbers on them, but they're written quite small on the ends, very small on the ends. So I think I'm going to try to keep them in this paper for as long as I can, uh, you know, because the box has actually got the sizes written on, but I can write them in a sharpie, you know, along the bottom of there. So I'm going to try and keep them and I'm not using them in this package. Purely because, you know what my eyes are like. And it's got little writing. And especially when you get like a purple hook. Like that one. I'll never see it at all. Anyway. That wasn't all what came in the bag, of course. What came in the bag was one of my favourite yarns. Again from Serdar. Wash and wear. If you've never used the wash and wear crepe, I, I would absolutely recommend you to try it. It's one of the yarns I always used to crochet in when I had my own shop. We used to sell it by the ton. It's not fancy, it's not super soft, it's not whatever, but for kids or whatever, 
you can chuck it in the washing machine you can do what you want with it and it never changes I've still got sweaters upstairs that I must have made 20 30 years ago and they're one of the few sweaters that look like new still right that's the one it's Serdar wash and wear and it's a beautiful beautiful shade of green and it's, has it got a name? Let me have a look if it's got a name. It does. It's called Lime Green. And it's shade number 0373. As I say, this order came from Kemp's. E. Kemp's, if you want to look it up. I'm not sure if they send abroad. Not sure. But they do have some lovely yarns on it. So this is Serdar's Wash and Wear Double Crepe. Might not be the softest. You might hold it and think that's not very soft, that feels a little bit, but sturdy. Tell you, if you want to make your kids anything, you know, they're going to hang upside down off uh, the bars in the park, you know, and swing yourselves around. This is the one to have for them. I used to make my sons, all my sons things in this. You can tell how good it is, it's still here. What, some like, what, 30, 40 years later? No, 30 years later, it's still around what else came in my package because he didn't just send me one pack of he sent me one i've never actually seen before and again it's soda spot on in for you know i like soda and it's called peekaboo uh, i've never actually felt this or seen this before oh that's beautifully soft Serdar Snuggly Peak Boo Double Litty. Isn't that lovely? That is so pretty. It's overall gives the impression of being pinks, but it's actually got some, I think it's grey. Not quite sure if it's a grey. It's got grey, and I don't know whether it's a pale pink or a pinky beige, and then it's got the flecks of the strawberry colour in it. Um, what's it called? It is called Pinky Dots. It's 0104 Pinky Dots. And uh, once again, I've got 10 50 gram bowls. So it's very, oh, it's very, very soft. Really soft. And not only have I got that. Last but not least, again I've got the Serdar Peekaboo again, and this one is called Hodgepodge. It's got my very favourite colour in it, and I'm j I still am trying to make my mind up whether this is actually a green or a beige. Some lights it looks a little bit like a dull olive green. But on looking at it like this, I think it is more of a beige it's got with it. And it's definitely got like a cream, a sort of darker beige and the lilac. Once again, I've got 10, 50 grams of it. And these are all, um, oh, they're nylon and acrylic, 55 nylon, 45 acrylic. But they are super duper soft. Um, like I say, I've not worked with this before, peekaboo. But this is what I, when I saw the, the pattern that Ephraim had sent me, that was the thing I married up with it. I thought, hmm, that's going to look nice in that. So watch this space, let me just check if I've got Oh, it says not. But I'm sure I can improvise by using another colour with it. Well, I'll get there. I'll do it. I will. I'll do it. But it's probably because it's big, isn't it? Maybe I shall use that for something else then, and I shall do that in something else. <laughs> it's not like I've not got much yarn to choose from, is it? You know, I've just got the odd one or two bowls upstairs in this craft room shed. So Ephraim has been in stashing housing for me. But I don't feel too guilty because it was a gift. So thank you very much, Ephraim. Oh, energy drinks. 
shouldn't drink them because I'm diabetic, but I'm just having a very, very droopy day. I'm having a beige day. My hair makes me feel miserable because it's too dark. And I don't know why I wear beige. is <laughs> because beige on its own. But I do love this necklace. It's one of my favourites. It isn't stone, it's probably plastic, but it gives the illusion of being stone. And it is actually quite heavy. So, it is. Excuse me, one minute. I know what I didn't show you the other day. Just excuse me for one second. I'm not going far. my first spider last night. Can't find the original spider, the great big spider that was wandering around. It seems to have uh, gone out the way it came in, which I don't know how it did or how, but it seems to have disappeared. Either that or it is lurking and I've never seen it since. But I caught myself a little spider. My niece was here when it came and she goes, oh look, they've given you a little plastic spider to practice with. I said, leave that plastic spider where it is. I don't want to see it. I'll just practice on a real spider. <laughs> I don't even like those little black plastic spiders. My son used to love them and it used to creep me out. So I'm ready, ready. I caught a baby spider last night. It was a little spider, but I was only practicing. And I was very humane. I threw it out the door. Won't kill a spider. Even though they do freak me. Well, I'm sitting here like Billy No Mates today. Um, oh dear, everybody's had medical <laughs> appointments today. Me included, I had my flu job. Um, Kelly went to see the doctor. Um, she's doing a course at the moment, um, a college course. So her only free day kind of thing is Wednesday. So unfortunately she wanted to see the doctor, so her free day was Wednesday, so she didn't come to see me. And um, Christina, she also had a medical appointment, so she couldn't come to see me. And of course Sue's daughter was in surgery this morning, I have messaged her. Um, but Sue said she'd phone me tonight when she found out what had happened. So, um, like I said, I'm Billy Lil Mates today. Well, not exactly, I have got the dog. The reason why I'm tired is he came rather early today, so I was a bit... <laughs> a little bit tired. I'm not tired when it's bedtime, that's my problem. I'm sort of wide awake, and I, if I make myself go to bed thinking, right, it's half past eleven, you're going to get in bed before midnight, and then you can at least have like seven hours sleep, because I never do eight. If I do eight hours sleep, I wake up and I feel so dreadful. I've got a headache and I feel drowsy all day. I just don't exist on eight hours. You know, six or seven and I'm, I'm fine, yeah. But I was, it was, I've not been, I've been lying awake when I've been going in bed. Um, I've been trying to think all the nice thoughts, you know, thinking about waves, seashores holidays I've enjoyed, you know, things like that. Trying not to think about projects and thinking, shall I be making um, wrist warmers next door hats or shall I do a cowl? Because my brain just goes into gear when I get into bed. And I'm, I'm thinking, stop it, stop it. And I'm telling, I have a, I've told you before I talk to myself. And I'm saying, go to sleep, relax. Think nice thoughts. So I can be walking down the streets in my, I'm ahead obviously, in Skiathos or somewhere nice like in Tenerife or wherever it's be, I've been in the past. And then all of a sudden, a neck warmer will pop into my head and I'm thinking, you're not thinking about that. Go back to the street where you were walking down, yeah? I even woke up this morning and I had been dreaming about being back in my wool shop and I'm thinking, I'm getting obsessed. <laughs> the 
I'm invading my dreams, yarn and wool and everything is invading my dreams. I must have a very empty head that's, well, it's not empty, it's just full of wool. <laughs> Other people go to work, go to work. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Who said that word? <laughs> Other people go to bed and um, they kind of worry about, I don't know, worry about the children maybe, worry about the husband, worry about the job. I don't have any of those. Well, I do have a son, but he's grown up, so he worries about himself now. And, um, you know, I just go to bed and start getting brilliant ideas that I don't remember the morning after. It's just, I don't know. I do think a lot about my crafting. I don't know whether you do or not. It's probably because I do live on my own and I don't kind of have anybody else who comes home and says, guess what kind of day I had at work today. Um, it's just me, like, the, the videos I watch are the YouTube videos on crochet. If they're too much about knitting, I stop watching them now. You know, if they're all knitting, I don't watch them at all. Um, purely because it, you watch what interests you. And I've got so many people that do interest me on YouTube that I can't watch everybody. So I have started to be a little bit, a bit more selective. If I look at the video and it's all about knitting, I think, sorry. <laughs> but I don't really want to watch you, you know. <laughs> you might be thoroughly very interesting, but... I'm into crochet at the moment, so that's what I want to watch. So, TV, I'm not that fussed about. There's certain programmes I do watch. Watch the last episode. They kept saying it was the last episode ever of Rosewood, which was a bit daunting. I thought, no, not the last episode ever, please. Everything I watch has been the last episode ever. You know, like Rizzoli and Isles and Castle and things like that. The last episode ever. Oh, no. Bring them back. I want to bring them back. I don't want to watch Game of Thrones. I'm not interested in that. I know you all are interested in it. You're all obsessed with it. I'm not. Never got into it. Never liked it. Watched half of an episode one time. I wonder what the heck it was all about. So... My daughter-in-law, she was obsessed with it. She watched everything. But there's certain things that I'm just kind of not interested in, you know. We've all got our likes and our dislikes. I mean, there'd be no variety on, on the TV or anything, would there, if we all like the same programmes? I mean, I'm definitely not a game show person, you know. I don't like these quiz games and shows like that. I just know. I'm more kind of criminology and um, I'll even watch all the autopsies, you know. Um, yeah, I like mysteries more than... I don't like sci-fi, I don't like anything like that. And I don't say this because Zoe might be watching, but I don't like Doctor Who. I watched it years, years, years ago, but... Not recently. Doesn't interest me anymore. So I've probably upset a million people out there now. Well, not a million. A million people don't even watch me. Hundreds. <laughs> I've probably upset hundreds of people by saying I don't like Doctor Who. And I think I must be the only person in the world who's never seen Jaws. There's so many films that everybody raves about and I've never even had the um, urge to go and watch them. Nope. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Yep. Well, that's about it, really. So, as far as I know, the rest of this week I will still be Billy Bill Bates. Maybe next week people will revive around and... Um, Come and see me. <laughs> but dinner tonight, I made a casserole the other day in my slow cooker, so I shall be reviving the last bit of that, warming that up. And um, tomorrow, I've got a salad. Yes, I know it's freezing cold out there and miserable. 
after I went shopping this morning and somehow I, I was drawn to a, it's a ready-made salad, I was drawn to a salad. So I thought, hmm, have a salad tomorrow. Grace, if you're watching, there's no cabbage in my salad. <laughs> Grace and her husband are on a cabbage um, thing at the moment. They just love cabbage, so they've been eating rather a lot of it. Not the cabbage soup, just cabbage dishes, yeah. So I have things when I eat a lot of a certain thing and then I go off them. I mean, I, I ate so much salmon when I was on a diet about two or three years back. I used to go up to Berry Market and the salmon was always quite cheap. So I used to get salmon and I can hardly look at salmon. I go, mm, my stomach just revolts, you know, when you've eaten too much of a thing. I'll be alright if I just leave it for a while. <laughs> I do that, I have a fad on something and I eat it, eat it, eat it and then all of a sudden I just suddenly go off it and don't want to eat it anymore. So, I think that's about all I've got to tell you for this uh, today, really. Oh, somebody did ask me why I was Paris dismembered in the corner, as she is. She had a little accident. Oops, let's hope I'm still there. She had a little accident while we were I was manoeuvring in here. And she's on a glass plinth and her leg is glued to this glass plinth. And because I'd bumped into her, she sort of fell off a twig, really. And so we tried to glue her, oops, with super glue, and obviously it didn't work. She's not broken um, with having this gaffer tape stuff on her, duct tape, whatever you want to call it. It's just that every time I picked her up, her leg fell off. <laughs> so we taped her leg on, yeah. And that was to tape her body, um, because her body kept falling off. The fact that her arms keep falling off is neither here nor there, is it? So I've ordered some different glue. Um, I looked up what I should be using to glue plastic to glass. And apparently it was some kind of epoxy glue I'm supposed to be getting. So I've ordered it. it hasn't arrived yet. There's quite a few bits and pieces that haven't arrived yet. Um, I still haven't washed or blocked anything because it won't stop... Oh drizzling or threatening to drizzle. People who live in warmer countries and things like that where it's nice and sunny you must have no trouble blocking your things because you can just pop them outside or pop them in the sunshine and get them dried in two minutes flat. I used to use the spare bed because the sun used to, well what bit of sun there used to be, stream through the window but of course now I don't have the spare bed because I've turned it into a craft room. So I've got a nice big table that's outside which I can dry things if the weather's beautiful. Hmm. So I'm waiting to block, wash and block, a from sweater, the virus shawl that was my hospital bag shawl because it went with me every time to a, an appointment. I need to choose another um, thing to make to take with me because Obviously that's finished now, so I need another project to put in my bag. But I'm not going back to the hospital until something, you know, something for October. So I've got quite a while to choose what I'm going to put in my hospital bag. So, anyway, I really am going to go this time because I'm running out of things to say. So I hope you're all having a happy day. I hope you're not feeling beige like me. I know some people have said they like my hair colour, but it doesn't feel like me. I feel drab. Colourless and drab. As I said, it would have helped if I'd have put some makeup on, but I didn't. Because I just feel drab. <laughs> I'm born to be blonde. Well, I'm not really. I was born to be a brunette, but we just gloss over that bit. Now I'm born to be blonde. <laughs> I said to my niece, am I going any greyer yet? And she goes, yes, you're going a little bit greyer at the front, but at the back, no, you're not. It's still brown. 
few dark, you know, a few grey stripes in the back, but still brown. Ah oh dear. People who go grey don't want to go grey. Because I want to go but light grey, not dark grey. It doesn't happen. So upon that note, I'm going to go. I know I said I'm going to go about four times before, but this time I really am going to go. So have a nice day, have a nice evening, have a nice whatever the rest of the week. Um, if somebody else comes and calls for me uh, this week, I'll probably make another video. It all depends if I do get any company or not. But I won't really have anything else finished to show you. So unless anything arrives interesting by post, which it might, not saying a word, but something might arrive later this week, because I may have been a little teensy weensy bit naughty. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We've all got to be a little teensy weensy bit naughty. Bye all.